Hey, I don't mean to be corny, but it's time to pack up your shit and go to Iowa. Phil. You're watching Phil in a Dash. Thanks for coming back to the channel. Undoubtedly you're watching this video because you need to know how to pack for your time on Ragbri. Your temporary residence here in Iowa for the week, maybe a few days. Now how you get here is totally up to you. How you get to that start is totally up to you. What you take after that for the entire week is all going to fit in one of these bags. This is your life for a week. You've got a bicycle, You've got your tent and your sleeping system and your clothes and your extra money all in a similar bag like this. Many different shapes, sizes, colors, all that sort of thing. What you're really going to need is a sturdy duffel bag that could be left outside in the rain and not get your stuff wet. Well, you know, that's not every duffel bag on the planet. All the zippers should work. It should fit all your stuff. It should be easy to carry from the truck to where you're gonna camp, which might be a couple hundred yards away. And most importantly, easily identifiable amongst the other 8,000 bags that are laying in a parking lot somewhere in the middle of Iowa. Now, of course, you're gonna have your bag tag on your bag and you're gonna have your rider number and bike number those numbers all match. So when they check you and your bag to see that you're taking the right one, those numbers need to match before you can leave that area. Once again, a little disclaimer, this video is geared towards the people that are using the baggage service on Ragbri. If you're on a charter like Pork Bellies or Iowa Central or one of the many other Ragbri charters, you've got kind of a little different list of rules. Uh, most of those charters will accept two bags of uh, smaller weight. The Ragbri baggage truck is going to have one bag up to 50 pounds. And yes, they will weigh it. And you don't want to play, let's make a deal with the guys at the baggage truck. Remember to be nice to your uh, baggage truck people because they have all your stuff. So while you may not have a semi-waterproof bag or one of those big bags that you uh, can use in a canoe and basically throw out in the water and it'll still stay afloat and keep all your stuff dry, most people are gonna have the good old canvas duffel bag. And in this canvas duffel bag, you're gonna have all your stuff. So it's out in the rain, you definitely wanna keep your stuff inside dry. That can be done easily with two different steps. One is to take one of these bags, which is called a compactor bag. They are purchased in a roll, similar to this, and you can get them at any hardware store, big box store, and we'll put a link in the description, of course, because that's what people on YouTube do, but the compactor bag is a foolproof way of keeping a regular cloth-sided duffel bag or backpack waterproof. Now, are you still gonna wanna put stuff inside, maybe in some stuff sacks that are also waterproof? Yeah, we'll talk about what, how it goes in to the bag and what that looks like a little later in the video. But a compactor bag is basically a little thicker than your contractor bag is. It's easy to throw all your stuff in here then throw the entire bag into your duffel bag. So again, if it's sitting outside all day in the rain, you don't have to worry about it. One note that I will say that if you have an exterior strap like this before you put it into the truck, just detach it. Put it in this outside pocket out here and then make sure your um, straps are bundled together. Now, of course, you'll have your rag bride bag tag on this and you know, how big this is, how long this is, how many liters or, or whatever you're using to measure how big your uh, 
duffel bag should be. Okay, so this is the 40 liter Road Tripper duffel bag from REI. We're not sponsored from REI or anything like that, um, but if anybody from REI is watching, you know, you know how to get all of me. This bag is what I consider a medium duffel bag. There's tons of different ways to decide what size of duffel bag you're gonna need. Remember, you're going on the truck, so it needs to be under 50 pounds. The other thing is, it'd be great if you had a shoulder strap or something like this, that you can actually throw it over your shoulder after you get off the truck, push your bike to wherever you're gonna camp that night, which could be, you know, 50 to 75 yards away from the truck or more. So having a great way to carry this without, you know, having to fill up your hands and try and push your bike at the same time is key. Compactor bag. Compactor bag works in everything. If you've ever backpack anywhere, you'll know a compactor bag. That's what most through hikers use, some type of bag liner to use to keep their stuff dry as they're out hiking for hours in the Appalachian Trail or wherever they're going. They're one size. If there's bigger ones, I don't know about them, but this is how long it is. So you can tell it's a 40 liter duffel bag or a medium size. This is more than long enough for that type of uh, type of size. How do you select what size of duffel bag you're going to need? Totally up to you. I always figure that it's on the longest item in the bag, which is usually your tent. And that's got tent stakes, tent poles, tent bag, all that sort of thing in one bag usually. But even if you're gonna separate those things to conserve space, the tent poles are not gonna break down. They're only gonna get so short. So keep that distance in mind and diagonally uh, figure out if you can get them in a medium or if you'll have to go with a larger, larger bag. And then of course, the other stuff you're gonna bring is gonna determine a lot of uh, what size that duffel bag needs to be. Keep in mind when you're watching this video that there are things that you're only going to need to get to the start and then they'll be um, out of your bag and this will be your kit for the whole week. So it'll have your clothes, your extra money, medication, toiletries, towels, all that sort of thing. And then there'll be the stuff that you really just need to get to the start. For instance, if uh, you're going to be riding the bus to Sioux City, or flying in, you're gonna need a duffel bag that's big enough to contain your helmet, your shoes, your bike bag, water bottles, all those other things. Um, if you're just being dropped off there by relatives or you're driving yourself, you can make one bag up for the truck, for the rag bright baggage truck, and then you can have another bag that you just have all your extra stuff because your bike's probably gonna be on the back of your vehicle or something like that. So. Um, this is the size that you're picking, you know, how are you going to get there does affect it. Also, if this is the first time that you've been watching one of these videos, uh, go to our playlist on RAGBRAI and it's got a few other videos in there on uh, how much money to bring, uh, what it looks like to just have you and your bike for a week, and then this one will be obviously in that playlist down the road, so maybe that's how you found us today. I don't want to leave out the backpack. A little friend of the backpack, yep. Backpack, it's designed to carry a sleeping bag and a tent. You've got every possible option. You might have a rain cover for it, uh, etc. etc. Here's my big problem with backpacks all this, all these straps. Now, if you do intend on using a backpack, you can probably find one for your specific model. Uh, this is my Osprey AG65, and you can probably find a travel cover for these. It's basically a super lightweight duffel bag that keeps all those straps from being uh, entangled with the other bags on the baggage truck. So it might be a good option for you if you're used to using yours and that type of thing. Like I said, downside for me, too many straps, too many things can uh, uh, fall open and, and that sort of thing. So. Uh, try it if you will. Also make sure it doesn't have a frame. That's one of the things that Pragbri is very specific on. No external frames and also no hard side uh, luggage. Alright, so to make this simple, uh, we're going to go over the stuff that you're going to need for your bike. Now this is stuff that you're just going to get to the start and pick up at the finish. The rest of the week it's going to live on your bike. So basically 
Um, these are things that you're not going to carry all week in your trusty duffel bag. Um, you're going to have your helmet, bike gloves, bring a couple pairs of bike gloves, extra headband, bandana, cycling cap. Make sure you're bringing that stuff to fix a flat. So have a couple extra tubes. Um, I'd keep one in your duffel bag and one on the bike. We've already talked about the patch kit in the other video, and we've talked about the multi-tool and what you're gonna need to fix a flat. A couple of days ago, we were doing a training ride and had a flat tire, so I guess I should have really made that video. So along with that patch kit and assorted things to fix your bike like the multi-tool, make sure you have a couple of really good water bottles. Um, you're gonna be able to get water along the trail, along the route, I should say, uh, quite easily and I like to take at least two bottles that I can fill up and have on the bike at all times. I also like to keep another water bottle that I can stash in the duffel bag for the campsite. So instead of trying to get up at two o'clock in the morning because I'm thirsty and can't find anything to drink, it's nice to have a little water bottle in the tent. You can always fill it up right before uh, you head to bed that night and um, have some water in the tent with you. You're gonna wanna bring a bike bag that fits your riding style. Uh, that bike bag is going to you know, have all your things for the day of the ride, including some type of a rain jacket, just in case it decides to rain that day. Because as we say in Iowa, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, it can change. Always thought when I moved here, that was just a joke. No, it's pretty much the weather forecast. Many people wonder if it's a good idea to bring a bike light uh, and a tail light for your bike. So, yeah, it is. I mean, you know, you're out there with thousands of people all going the same direction, but anything that you can do to help a car or another rider see you, I think is a good idea. So having a red blinky on the back and a white blinky on the front isn't that bad of idea. Make sure all that stuff fits in that bike bag we talked about and, you know, your level of what you're comfortable with taking and packing and riding with uh, all day is going to vary um, for your needs, your skill set, uh, how it fits on your bike, all those good things. So now's the time to be out there putting in some more miles, checking out the bike bags and bringing your stuff with you, so to speak, the stuff that you're going to daily use and then stop at a bar, have something to eat, get some pie from a random restaurant, and then ride back to your house. That's the only way you can really train for this. Another question is, should I bring a bike lock to carry with me all day? And people do. Um, they stack their bikes up and will use a bike lock to chain them all together, if you will. Um, one or two people are carrying that bike lock and uh, you gotta leave when your friends leave. Um, and if they're not wanting to leave early, you're just hanging around. And yeah, it's, it's a good idea. You know, um, there's some theft that occurs on Ragbri. Usually it's uh, overnight. Somebody gets a uh, bike pilfered. And so, yeah, definitely it's good to have your bike as secure as possible uh, in the campsite overnight, as well as it is to have it secured to other bikes perhaps while you pull over for lunch and you might be walking around town or you might be out in some farmer's front yard where they're selling uh, food and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's, it's an easy thing to pack along, a little extra security. One of the more common questions that comes up is how am I gonna get my tires inflated properly before I leave camp? And if you're on the uh, baggage truck, you know, there might be a few people that have pumps. Um, check with your tenting neighbors to see if they have a frame pump or something that you could use. But uh, be prepared, be prepared. Bring yourself a frame pump and put it in your overnight bag, the stuff that you have right there with your, uh, with your stuff at the tent. Also consider bringing some chain lube and put it in a Ziploc bag, throw it in the bag. Before you leave every morning, you can easily uh, clean down your chain and take your uh, tires up to the pressure that they need to be. Also overnight, it gets really dewy in Iowa. So take your, uh, basically like a, a grocery bag, little grocery bag, put it over your seat at night when your bike's sitting outside, if it is, and um, that'll keep your hiney from being wet all the next day. 
Hey, let's talk about tents. So, if you don't have a tent, now is the time you should be thinking about buying one. And don't be that person that's unpacking it from the box in the campsite. At least try and set it up once. Maybe even sleep in it overnight. It can be in your backyard, it can be at a campground, it can be in your friend's backyard, your mom's basement, whatever you want to do. But make sure you know how to set up your tent. It's going to be comfortable with all your uh, belongings inside there. And uh, keep in mind, this is your home away from home for the entire week. So try and be as comfortable as possible. A person that is riding by themselves, doing rag by, you've obviously got tons of options for tents. If you have a partner with you, you know, you've got two people, uh, two amounts of stuff that you want to have inside the tent. And um, if you've ever been in a two person tent with two people, you realize just how small that is. Uh, you've got to really like that person. So if you are looking at as a single uh, participant, riding solo, you've got that option of a single person tent or a double person tent, two person tent, whatever they want to call it. I would suggest a two person tent. They're not that much bigger when they're packing. Basically, here's the difference. This is a passage one from REI. This is a passage two. Passage one is a great one person tent. I usually use this tent when I'm on my bike and I'm bagging it. So I have panniers on the bike front and back and I'm able to carry this tent. So that means all my stuff is on the bike, not being handled by somebody else. The two person tent would be ideal for a lot of single riders because you've got so much more room. You've got room enough, you're not gonna be able to stand up unless you're incredibly short, and even I'm not incredibly short. But, go with this for a minute. You're gonna be changing clothes in there. You're gonna be wiggling around trying to get your uh, bike shorts on and off. That is possibly the next Olympic sport. Also, you're gonna to wanna to have some room to lay out your stuff for the next day. Um, you might wanna have that bottle of water there. Um, you know, maybe you're gonna move some stuff in off the bike and not have to sleep around it. So the two-person tent is really a great option. Doesn't matter if it comes from REI or, you know, Eureka, Walmart, um, any of those places, but definitely get your tent out, set it up in your backyard, someone else's backyard, mom's basement, whatever your uh, living situation is, and get comfortable with that before the day of the ride. Also, if you have the opportunity to get a ground cloth for your bike, don't. You should get one for your tent. There's no such thing as a crown cloth for your bike. Follow me for more tips. Anyway, get the crown cloth. You're not always going to be in a really smooth surface and you're probably going to be in areas that aren't normally camped in like a city park or a football field or a baseball field or, or something of that nature, soccer fields. So there could be all sorts of junk in there, goose poop, whatever you want to just use your imagination. Ground cloth, definitely the way to go. Each one of these tents usually comes with stakes. If you buy them right out of the right out of the box, they'll come with enough tent stakes to use. Most of the times, ground is soft enough that you can just step on that tent stake and put it in if you need to at all. But uh, it does get windy at night, and uh, it's windy in the day too. It's called a headwind. But anyway, I digress. Going back to the tent, stick with, you know, having at least the four corners of your tent affixed to the ground. And then by the time you get you in there, and if you leave, you're not gonna be picking up your tent from the next county. Here's a few other things you might wanna consider while you're uh, packing your bag for rag bry. Ground cloth, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, Lightweight sleeping bags are great. Um, 40 degree bags usually work really well. It does get super hot at night. It's humid, we grow corn here. Yeah, so anyway, maybe you just need a twin size sheet or um, a bag liner or something you might use in a hostel where uh, it's just a uh, big pillowcase for your body, so to speak. 
um, travel sheets that are called commonly if you're at a store or online. I'll try and get some description uh, links in there for various items that I've used before. Um, not only on Ragbri, but different uh, little bike tours. It's uh, super important that you get at least a comfortable night's sleep. And um, some people even put like a, a battery operated fan in their tent. I've never really had a good amount of luck with those. But uh, if, if you do you, whatever works for you is great. Going back to that sleeping pad for a minute. Um, there's a sleeping pads that you commonly think of when you're a hiker. So you've got this sleeping pad that's maybe a uh, inch to three inches thick. You need to blow that up every night. Um, usually there are bags that you can use to uh, blow those things up. Commonly they're referred to as a pump sack. Some of them come with the actual uh, sleeping pad. Other ones are uh, something you'll have to purchase and they'll fit more universally. So if you're going to go the route of the Coleman type twin size air mattress that you're commonly going to find at a big box sporting goods store or uh, Walmart, you know, that type of deal, be sure you've got something to blow that thing up with because it's going to take a huge volume of air and you're not going to be by uh, any electricity. There are battery operated pumps that you can put in your uh, luggage again. Just make sure that you've got some means to blow that thing up um, that's not your lungs because you're, you're going to be tired from riding all day. And the last thing, trust me, you want to do is uh, try and blow up a big air mattress. It's a twin size thing that's like six to eight inches tall. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd go definitely try and stick with more of the backpacker type uh, air mattress. Hey, before we get to the uh, before we get to the clothing part of this and how to pack clothes and stuff for the shower and and all that sort of thing, let's address the personal items. Make sure before you leave the house, however you're getting to Sioux City, make sure you have you have your wristband, your baggage ID, everything that they sent you in that little packet because you will need it all week. Most of the people will put their bike band on the day that they get there, wherever that goes on your bike. Um, a lot of people collect them. So, you know, make sure that it uh, goes over the other 25 you have on there or wherever, if you're, it's your first time, pick a good spot because you're gonna wanna come back and do it again. Along with the items from Ragbri that came in the packet, make sure that you bring your ID. Also your insurance card. We talked about one of these things, a road ID great great item to have with you in case you need medical attention you can have this set up to uh, display the number of someone you need to call or where the paramedics or whoever's first responder type folks can look and see what your medical history is so it's a great great item to have and if you look in the description there's a 20 percent discount if you're looking to add one to your uh, Ragbri list or just need to update your other one. And let's not forget cash and some credit cards for this whole great little adventure. Um, we already talked about this in another video, but I really believe that you should have some of your cash stashed in with your clothing items in the uh, baggage that you're going to turn over to some random stranger that's going to throw it in the back of a truck and drive it down to the next town. If you haven't had a chance to check out that video yet, it'll be in the playlist. And uh, take a look at it. There's a lot of good information in there, says the guy that made the video. Sunscreen, chapstick, chamois butter, these are all things that you'll be using uh, on the bike, so make sure you've got those with you in those bike bags we talked about earlier. There's also a, a small need that you should have uh, just a, a really small first aid kit, some band-aids, um, alcohol wipes, that type of stuff, just in case you would scrape your knee or need some sort of medical attention. If you need really big medical attention, of course, you can always find a guy with an ambulance and um, they usually have everything that they need right there. Don't forget your medication. If you've got medication to take throughout the day, bring it with you. Everyone will thank you. I know my doctor feels better when I take my medication.
be sure that you're leaving in the morning with that medication on your person, on your bike bag, so you've got everything you need for the day, and then you can restock it when you get back to your tent that night. And uh, also, maybe you put a little bit bigger first aid kit for those aches and pains, maybe some vitamin I in there, uh, that's ibuprofen, and that'll help you sleep a little bit better, and also um, maybe make some of the pain from the hills go away from the day before. Batteries, yes, yes, you're gonna need a brick, charging block, some sort of thing, because you're gonna have electronic devices, you're gonna have a cell phone at the bare minimum. You should keep some sort of a, a cell phone charger on your bike, or a brick that's big enough to charge your cell phone from dead. Uh, I always suggest putting those things in airplane mode because it, it uses a lot of battery when you're just looking for a signal that's never going to be found. So uh, keep one of those small ones on your bike that you can hook up your phone and uh, have that charge if you're going to use a ride with GPS or something like that. It's going to take a lot of battery. You can be taking pictures with that thing too and then have a couple other ones in your luggage that you're going to um, need to charge stuff up overnight. And uh, keep in mind that you might not be able to refresh those chargers on the route. So you might need a couple there just to get you through the week. Sunscreen, sunglasses, chamois butter, those are all things you're going to want to have on the bike. While we're on the personal item uh, list here, let's talk about toiletries and shower towels. So yes, you can go up to a shower truck and get a towel for an extra few bucks. If you want to save some money and just bring your own towel, that's fantastic. Get yourself a quick dry shower towel from an outfitter. These things can be hung up, uh, just hung over your bike or something and dry literally in a few minutes. They're not the big fluffy towel that you're going to see at the Hilton. No, it's just going to be the regular bath sheet for some reason they've got some super power absorbency and they come in various different sizes. I also keep one in my uh, tent at night because I wear contacts a lot when I ride and uh, that gives me just a little uh, face cloth type size of one and again it dries out very very quickly and uh, makes it easier to uh, keep my hands clean when I'm trying to get my contacts in and out. Okay, shower time! There's a line. There'll always be a line. If you're with a charter or you're in the general campgrounds, the main campgrounds where there's shower places that will come pick you up in a golf cart and take you to their showers, you're still going to be standing in a line. The deal with the line is people are usually in the line longer because people aren't prepared when they get into the shower. Chances are you've taken a shower before. And if you've been in the military, you will take the world's shortest, most efficient shower because you were trained how to do that. And one of the things that just drives me nuts is when somebody goes in to a shower with this huge bag of 45 things that they don't really need. Take a small Ziploc once again, or a uh, actual shower caddy bag that you can hang up on something that will be in the shower and that little shower towel we were talking about and there you go make sure you've got your shampoo and your razor and your conditioner whatever else you need see a lot of people walk in and they will um, walk in and they will before they completely strip down to get in the shower They'll be wearing their bike shorts or their bibs or whatever the case is and they will get them wet and then they'll peel those off and then they'll rinse them out in the shower water and then they'll go on about taking their shower, get done, dry off, you know, bring shower sandals, slides, you know, whatever you want to, even if you're going to wear them to town later and uh, then change into your uh, clothes for town for that night. All right, now we're to that part where we're going to talk about clothing and shoes and all those good things for the ride coming up. Let's keep in mind that not everybody's going to have seven sets of bike clothes that they can work with all week. And 
nobody really needs to bring five pairs of shoes to uh, wear to town. We're going to talk about uh, various different types of bags that you can use to get your stuff into your duffel bag without taking a lot of uh, room up and, and trying to organize this thing. So at whatever time you get up in the morning, you don't have to hunt around your tent for everything. It goes in the same place every time. You know where everything is, place for everything, everything in this place. Commercially available stuff sacks are waterproof or they cannot be waterproof. When you buy these things, make sure you buy something that is waterproof. You can put all sorts of stuff in here, roll down the top a couple times, and then put the buckle in there, stuff that's in here will stay dry. They come in various different sizes, little sizes and bigger sizes. This is a compression stuff sack. Has these straps on the outside of it. Whatever you put in here, this is specially vented. So when you squeeze it down, all the air goes out of it. This is a great thing to put your sleeping bag in. It's going to take much, much less room than it would be if you just put your regular sleeping bag inside. We can make these clever little uh, bags that you can still roll down. It's got a vent on the outside, so it'll push some of that extra air out. And you can see what's in there because you forgot what you put in the darn thing. Um, I don't really suggest if you have like a toiletries kit or something like that, that you put that into a stuff sack. Usually uh, you can just wrap that with a regular plastic bag from the grocery store because most of the time it doesn't really matter if that stuff gets wet. So, All right, so this is my sleeping bag. This takes up a lot of room. This is a 40 degree sleeping bag that I got on clearance. It is the Dolomite 2S and that is from North Face. So this is the bag that came with the uh, sleeping bag. And if you're not going to worry about, you know, getting this into, you know, you've got a smaller, um, excuse me, you've got a larger duffel bag. It doesn't really matter that this is going to be kind of big and bulky, but it does squish down. And again, you're just stuffing this in there. That's why they call them stuff sacks. It's not because there's stuff that goes in them. It's because you're stuffing whatever you're putting in there. That is it. So here's your stuff sack. This is what this looks like. And you pull the drawstring. This is the size that that's going to fit in to go into your duffel bag. Now, if you take the compression stuff sack, it's a whole different story. Let's keep a little visual reference of this. And we're going to do it again with the compression stuff sack. It doesn't really look much different than a, a regular waterproof stuff sack, except for it has this funky little cap thing on it and some uh, cinches or some cable that you're gonna cinch down. I guess it's technically webbing and it's quite a bit smaller around than the one that came with this. So while we're here, I wanted you to see this. And again, we're just gonna stuff this thing in the bag um, if you ask your outfitter, like, hey, how far can I compress this bag down? They will tell you that, you know, how, how you can do it. This isn't really a super duper, um, you know, sleeping bag. It's, it's really good for, um, you know, like a weekend hike or biking or whatever. It's not like an enlightened equipment quilt or something really fancy with a lot of loft that you have to custom order. This is something off the clearance rack. Yeah, once again from REI. So you got it to this point in time and you are still stuffing this thing in there. So we're almost in the home stretch. You need, see you can tell already that we're kind of at the, uh, at the um, capacity, I guess, of this, of this setup. The thing that I've done with this bag is I've used it in my um, pannier on the bike when I'm touring. So that's why we have this bag here. So I'm going to wrestle with this live on camera because it's probably highly entertaining. Here we are. Got everything in there. I'm going to push this down just a little bit more. I'm going to try and roll this over one time 
so we can get that seal. The thing is, when I went to buy this, and I, I took my sleeping bag into the outfitter's place, and the big one, or the bigger one of this size, was too big, and this is just on the edge. Now, this is only going to be compacted throughout the night, so you're not doing any damage or whatnot. You want to take and loosen up these straps, and then we're going to put this thing over the top, and... I think we got it. Okay, so here's that little cap we talked about. That cap also seems to be waterproof. It's going to take and cover up that end. Then you're just going to take and cinch down these sides a little bit at first, just so everything's squared away on top. And then you can keep cinching this down. And it's going to take up a lot less room in your sleeping bag, or excuse me, in your uh, luggage than it would normally if it was in that bag. Now, arguably, you know, it, it's tight in there. I mean, I'm not going not gonna to lie, but this is a smaller volume and it fits into, like my panniers, much better, which means it's going to take less room up in your duffel bag. So maybe you can go with this little smaller duffel bag and not have to get one of these giant monstrosity bags that you see people hiking the Himalayas with. But um, yeah, give it, a, give it a look. Compression stuff sack versus regular stuff sack. While we're on the subject of specific gear, we've got the big fluffy bath towel that you'd probably get, you know, if you're at your grandma's house or wherever you're gonna be at, versus the small, compact, packable, and quick dry, uh, usually they call these a bath sheet. Um, have a link or so in the description. But this is a Sea to Summit. They call this a pocket towel. So it's very, very much thinner. It's larger. This fabric is thinner than a microfiber uh, towel that you'd normally probably be very familiar with. And it dries very, very quickly. It has a little hook here. So you can hook these up to a tree, tree limb. Just let that thing blow out and it'll be dry in no time. Um, they do usually come with some sort of a stuff sack case, whatever that's vented, and then you can just toss that in your bag. But you can see, big fluffy towel isn't going to take a while to dry. This thing, while it might be huge, takes less time to dry, and it packs down to almost nothing. Um, if you're going to want to save a few bucks and not spend $5 more on every shower you're getting, I would highly suggest looking into these. Um, I haven't found one that I really liked any better than any other one. I'll put some links in the description. But um, yeah, this is this is available, you know, online, local outfitters, whatnot. Um, this brand is Sea to Summit. Really like their stuff. I've gotten some from REI as well. And there you have it. There's your little uh, your little bag for the. Uh, for your shower. Okay, with all the stuff about the stuff sacks, these are kind of expensive. You only buy them once they last forever. You're not using them every day. You've got the compression style, you got the rain or waterproof style, um, all different sizes, all different manufacturers, all different price points. You really need to get something that works for you. Obviously, you want to keep your sleeping bag, your sleeping pillow, that type of stuff dry for the night. Uh, the tent, even if it's really dewy and you have to put it away in the morning, um, by the time you put it up and then start putting your stuff into the uh, tent, you're, you're gonna, it's going to dry. It's so Ziploc bag is my favorite, probably most versatile bag of any of these little stuff sacks, waterproof, not waterproof, that you can get. The quart and the gallon Ziploc bag. This is a gallon Ziploc bag and this is my favorite hack, trick, whatever you want to call it, for packing on rag bry. Every morning you're going to get up at God only knows what time, 5.30 let's say, and you're going to go over to that bag that's in the end of your tent and try and figure out what to wear for the day. If you've decided that already, then you don't need to do that. All you need to do is come over and get you a little Ziploc pre-packaged bag that you had to make before you got there. You might not have enough shorts and jerseys to uh, deal with the whole seven days, have a new kit 
or have new stuff to wear every day, fresh stuff to wear, I should say. You know, you'll only need your three sets and then you can rinse those out or do laundry along the route, whatever the case is. Um, I like to have enough stuff to wear something different every day for a jersey and usually can rotate the bibs or shorts out every other day. So that's how I work it. Might work for you, might not. But uh, here's a little Ziploc trick with the gallon bag. Take your socks that you're going to use for that day. Put that in there. Take your jersey for that day. It doesn't matter. You don't have to fold it. Just jam it in there. Um, another trick is, you know, we talked about having that money. Put your money for the day in the back of the jersey pocket, then jam it in here. Then you've got your bibs or shorts or whatever for the day. Put those guys in there too. Also, branding. Anyway, putting those guys in there and jamming that all in the one gallon Ziploc. Put the air out of it, get that thing started, and you're on your way to having whatever day's clothes this is That's all it takes. When you get back that night, you'll have an empty Ziploc bag to put these things in and hopefully not have to open those things out until you get back to your place with some sort of hazmat suit. So this is what that looks like. This could be Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or whatever. You can write yourself a little inspirational note. Only 85 miles today with 4,000 feet of climb. Whatever floats your boat. But when you pick this up, now you've got all your clothes for the day. Notice I didn't say underwear because in case you're new to this, you don't wear underwear under your bike shorts, bike bibs. That's why you have the chamois butter. The chamois butter is gonna make everything better. Um, if you don't know how to use this, I'm sure there's tons of places that will uh, give you a video on how to use that. Really quick tutorial. It goes on the pad, everybody's different goes on the pad you put that on see how it works augment it from there don't tell anybody about it but that's why you want to carry one of these little uh, chamois butter things with you discreet you can uh, reapply during the day whatever you need to do another little tip is if you don't have enough gear the rag Bry trailer always sells current gear but at the expo they have old gear and I don't want to say old gear like used gear, but stuff that they haven't sold from other years. You don't know what sizes are available or what styles, but if you're just looking for some more bike shorts or, or another jersey for the week, definitely check them out at the expo because you can buy um, the uh, former uh, kit styles and sizes uh, for, for pennies on the dollar. So check that out while you're at the Rag Buy Expo. Okay, town clothes. Town clothes, what are we gonna wear to town? You don't need a new set of town clothes for every night. You really don't. Bring a couple pairs of shorts and a couple t-shirts and yes, underwear, and you can go to town. Kinda sounded dirty. Anyway, staying focused, figure out your three finest t-shirts and the shorts that you look the best in. Bring a hat if you want to. And you got everything you need for town. Um, nobody's gonna care that you wore the same thing every night. The chances of seeing the same people every time, unless you're with a group, isn't really, really gonna happen. So yeah, just a couple pairs of underwear, couple pairs of shorts, couple t-shirts, some flip-flop slides, whatever, tennis shoes, you're good for the entire week. Oh, did I mention the underwear thing? Hey, as far as other um, off-bike clothes, you might want to bring a swimsuit. You might want to bring a hat or a visor. Um, keep in mind that your hat or your visor is going to be in that luggage bag that's on the truck. So, um, one of your hats is gonna look nice even when it's smashed. Uh, but you don't have to worry about your hair then. One of the 
better items that you can have with you at camp is a headlamp. Because if you go to the concert and now you're walking back to your tent and you're trying to find out what tent's yours in the sea of tents, it's great to have a headlamp. At least bring a flashlight. But if you have a headlamp, you got your hands free. So you can be trying to text your buddy, go, hey, where, where were we staying at tonight? Or any of those big questions of life that you might have after seeing Bogat or Leonard Skinner or whoever the band is. There you have it, my take on packing for Ragbri. I hope you found this information useful, uh, whether you've done it several times before or this is your first ride. Please check out the links in the description if you can't find your stuff locally at your bike shop or your local outfitter. And uh, we would really appreciate you using our links. We get a little monetary compensation from that, but it doesn't cost you anything more. So once again, thanks for watching the video. And until next time, take care of your dash. We'll see you.